Good morning everyone. Our lesson for today is about cell cycle regulation. So in this lesson, you will be given a chance to review the basic principles in the cell cycle and then learn its regulatory processes. So the focus will be on the topics about the general overview of the cell cycle control system and the checkpoints. And in the last part, it will be all about the molecular components that drive the regulation of cell, the cell cycle processes. So at the end of this lesson, you will be able to review the general process of the cell cycle, differentiate the major regulatory transitions of the cell cycle control system, identify the cell cycle control checkpoints, and identify the components of the cell cycle control system. So before we go into our proper discussion, let us have first a quick review now, of the things that you have learned now, during your previous courses. Okay, so you have here now, a series of photos and I want you to match the following stages now, of the cell cycle to the figures below. So you have here interface, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, or telophase. So number one, what phase of mitosis is this? Is it interface, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, or telophase? How about number two? How about number three? How about number four? And how about number five? Okay, so you are correct. Now the figure in number one is at metaphase. Okay, we know this because you have here the, the chromosomes which are aligned at the metaphase plate. Figure number two is a telophase. You have here that uh, two daughter cells that are already formed. Figure number three is an anaphase. You can see the separation of the sister chromatids. Number four is at interface. You, you can see that the uh, chromosomes are not yet visible and you have the intact nuclear membrane. And number five is at prophase. So this is where the chromosomes have already condensed and are already replicated and the uh, spindle fibers are already formed. So this is, uh, uh, these cells are actually animal cells. So the question is, how does the cell regulate these phases you know, so that they could produce cells that are identical to themselves? And we know that that is very important you know, in mitosis, you know, that the daughter cells will be identical to that of their parent cells. Okay, so let us have a brief review of a eukaryotic cell cycle. So a typical eukaryotic cell represented by a human cell in culture divides approximately every 24 hours. Okay. There are two basic parts that comprising the cell cycle. So these are the mitosis and interface. So mitosis or the nuclear division is the most dramatic stage of the cell cycle. It is the time when the separation of the daughter chromosomes occur and usually ends with cell division or the cytokinesis or the division of the cytoplasm. So about 95% of the cell cycle is spent in interface no? because the, 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 the interface is the period in between mitosis or successive nuclear division. Okay? So at interface, the chromosomes are decondensed, meaning it is back to its normal state. It is distributed throughout the nucleus. So the nucleus appears morphologically uniform. However, at the molecular level, interface is the time when both DNA replication and cell growth occur at as the cell prepares to divide. So the, the cell maintains its growth rate throughout the interface. So most of the dividing cells, they double in size between one mitosis to the next. Conversely, DNA is synthesized during only a portion of the interface. DNA synthesis divides the cycle of eukaryotic cells into four discrete 
phases that we have previously done in your previous subjects. So these phases are the M phase, the G1 phase, or the GAP1, the S phase or the synthesis phase, and the G2 phase or the GAP2. So what are the distinct processes that occur within these phases? So the M phase of the cell cycle is the period now when mitosis occurs in okay, the nuclear division. And this is usually followed by cytokinesis or the division of the cytoplasm. The mitotic phase is further divided into four major phases that include the prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and the telophase, as we have done in our uh, the first part of our lesson. The G1 phase is the one that follows now the M phase, which corresponds to the interval between mitosis and DNA replication. So it is the S phase that is the one that follows the G1 phase, and this is during this phase when the DNA replication takes place, or the doubling of the DNA. Okay? So one copy of the DNA becomes two copies. The G2 phase follows the completion of DNA synthesis, and it's during this phase when the proteins are synthesized in preparation for mitosis. So that is, oh, these are the different phases now of the cell cycle. So how is, are these processes regulated? How do they control so that there will be no abnormalities in the cell that are formed? So extracellular signals from the environment regulate the progression of cells through the division cycle. Moreover, internal signals monitor and coordinate the various processes that take place during different cell cycle phases. So an example of cell cycle regulation by extracellular signals is provided by the effect of growth factors on animal cell proliferation. So when you say proliferation or the continuous division or you know, the growth, the, the continuous division of the cell. Also, various cellular processes you now that occur in cells such as growth, DNA replication, and mitosis must be coordinated during the progression of the cell cycle. This is accomplished by a series of control points that regulate progression the various phases of the cell cycle. So in eukaryotic cells, the cell cycle control system is uh, generally uh, governs cell cycle progression at three major regulatory trans transition. So what are these regulatory transitions? You have the first, the start or the restriction point found in late G1, okay? We have here, this is the restriction or the start. It is where the cell will commit to cell cycle entry and chromosome duplication. So passage through start is controlled by external signals such as the availability of nutrients as well as by the cell size. So they, they will check if, or is, is the cell already uh, ready? for the the next step you know after g1 okay. another uh, regulatory transition is the g2m transition it is where you now the control system checks you know, this is the g2m transition meaning a transition in between g2 and the mitotic phase so this is when the, the cell We'll check if all DNA has been replicated already and if the environment is favorable for nuclear division and triggers the early mitotic events that lead to chromosome alignment on the mitotic spindle in metaphase. So the system checks if all DNA has been replicated already and if the environment is favorable to proceed to the next phase of the cycle. Now the last phase to, uh, to regulatory transition is called the metaphase to anaphase transition. It is where the control system okay, checks if all chromosomes are already attached to the spindle and will stimulate sister chromatid separation leading to the completion of mitosis and 
cytokinesis. So these are the regulatory uh, transitions. So if problems are detected inside or outside the system, so what happens you know, during these uh, regulatory transitions? So say for example, in here, you know, if the cell is not yet uh, mature for DNA synthesis, then it will not go to the uh, DNA synthesis stage. That's why it is a checkpoint. You know? So during these regulatory transitions, if problems are detected inside or outside of the cell, the control system blocks progression through each of the transitions. If the control system senses you know, problems in the completion of DNA replication, for example, it will hold the cell at the G2M transition until those problems are solved. Similarly, if extracellular conditions are not appropriate for cell proliferation, the control system blocks progression through start, thereby preventing cell division until conditions become favorable. Now, coordination with one another of the events that take place during different stages of the cell cycle is important now, so that they occur in the appropriate sequence. In most cells, the coordination between different phases of the cell cycle is dependent on a series of cell cycle checkpoints that prevent entry into the next phase of the cell cycle until the events of the preceding phase have been completed. So two important checkpoints in eukaryotic cells ensure that complete genomes are transmitted to daughter, daughter cells. So what are these checkpoints? So these are the DNA damage checkpoints and the spindle assembly checkpoints. And how do they differ from each other? So DNA damage checkpoints function to ensure that DNA damage is not replicated and passed on to daughter cells. So these checkpoints sense damaged or completely replicated DNA and coordinate further cell cycle progression with the completion of DNA replication or repair. Thus, DNA damage checkpoints functions where so they are found in G1, the S, and the G2 phase of the interface. And this lead to cell cycle arrest if no, the, the DNA damage is detected at these uh, stages or even unreplicated DNA is uh, uh, detected. Spindle assembly checkpoint, on the other hand, maintains the integrity of the genome occurring towards the end of mitosis. So this checkpoint sees to it that the alignment of chromosomes on the mitotic spindle is successful. It's important to ensure that a complete set of chromosomes is distributed accurately to the daughter cells. Otherwise, if there is a failure of one or more chromosomes to align properly on the spindle and causes mitosis, it will cause no mitosis to arrest at metaphase. So prior to the segregation of the newly replicated chromosomes to daughter nuclei. As a result of the spindle assembly checkpoint, now the chromosomes do not separate until a complete complement of chromosomes has been organized for distribution to each daughter cell. Okay, so with that, there are checkpoints and there are, uh, there are regulatory transitions. So how do they know if something is wrong? No? So there are two key components of the cell cycle control system. These are the cyclin and the cyclin-dependent kinases. So these kinases are enzymes you know, that are involved in transferring phosphates. Okay? So when cyclin forms a complex with CDK, the cyclin-dependent kinases, the protein kinase is activated to trigger specific events. So, without cyclin, CDK is inactive. Okay? Now, there are four classes of cyclins. Each class is defined by the stage of the cell at which they bind CDKs and when they are functioning. 
Now, only three of these are required in all eukaryotic cells. So these are the G1 S cyclins, S cyclins, and M cyclins. Others could have G1 cyclins. So G1S cyclines will activate CDKs no, in late G1 and thereby trigger progression through start no, or the restriction, resulting in the commitment to cell cycle entry. So G1S cyclin levels fall no, during the S phase. Now it is at the uh, it is when the time that the S cyclines you know, bind CDK soon after progression through start and help stimulate chromosome duplication. So the levels of a cyclin remain elevated until mitotic phase. So these cyclines also contribute to the control of some early mitotic events. M cyclines, on the other hand, nor those that activate CDKs that simulate entry into the mitosis at the G2M transition. And their levels fall in mid-mitosis. Now, in most cells, the fourth class of cyclin is called the G1 cyclin. Helps govern the activities now, of the G1 and cyclines, which control progression through start now in late g1 okay so as observing yeast a single cdk protein binds all classes of cyclines so there are, is only one type of cdk but there are many types of cyclines and they trigger different cell cycle and events by changing cycline partners at different stages of the cycle so conversely in vertebrate cells there are four cdks Okay, so in yeast, only one. In vertebrate, there are four CDKs. Two of those interact with G1 cyclines, one with G1S and S cyclines, and one with S and M cyclines. So in this lesson, we could simply refer to the different cycline CDK complexes as G1 CDK, G1 S CDK, S CDK, and M CDK. So how do the different cycline CDK complexes trigger different cell cycle events? So some reports stated that the cycline protein does not simply activate its CDK partner, but also directs it to specific target protein. So as you have seen here. So as a result, each cycline CDK complex will phosphorylate a different set of substrate proteins okay so you have here target protein that is phosphorylated so that, that, that is the function of a kinase now it transfers phosphate you know, into another uh, substrate okay so some cdk cycle can also induce different effects at different times in the cycle so probably because of the accessibility of some cdk substrate that changes during the cell cycle certain proteins on the other hand that functions in those for example may become available for phosphorylation in g2 okay so to summarize our lesson for today now let me give you the summary questions what are the general processes involved in the cell cycle what are the major regulatory transitions of the cell cycle and how do they differ? What are the different cell cycle control checkpoints? And how do they function? And what are the components of the cell cycle control system? So I hope you will be able to answer that one you know, as you go along you know, in reviewing this uh, lesson. So before I end, allow me to thank Mr. Aaron Oliver Sibalondo for the help in making the slide presentation that I used today. So thank you very much. If you have any question, you can contact me through this email or you can contact your respective lecture instructor through their emails provided. Or you can directly key in your questions to the official uh, Facebook Messenger group chat. So thank you very much and see you again on our next lesson.